Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Green Factor where we talk about green design and the business of sustainability. I'm your host Haris the Green Carpenter and today is a special episode. It's the start of our uh, new uh, segment called Green Factor Unplugged. And um, in this uh, episode, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, interview brand founders um, with my co-host, Mia. And like previously on previous session, hi, Mia. Hi. Thanks for having uh, me. And I am so excited about this collaboration. Awesome. Awesome. So um, today, uh, last time we have a, a talk about the metrics, right, on, on how mm-hmm. you choose brand according to their metrics and uh, today we will be having uh, Haniza from Nisa Kapas but before we go into uh, talking with her um, can you recap us a little bit about the metrics? Sure I mean just a brief description for those who don't know about Unplug we are a retail platform where we support over 50 sustainable driven and conscious brands from Malaysia and also around the world Um, and it's a curated shop Um, So I'm really excited about this collaboration because we actually want to give voice to these brands and go behind the scenes and get to know their process and their stories and the values. Um, So the curation around our retail platform, when we look at conscious brands, we curate based on uh, a variety of eight metrics. So you can see on the screen, we have eight metrics. Um, And today, in light of us uh, speaking to Nisa Kapas, we're really going to zoom in on the metric of local mate and especially preserving traditional skills. Um, You know, it's it's a bit broad, but we want to go deep and really see how this translates into the product and the design process and the values that customers take home beyond beyond just the product. So um, you you want to go just a little bit on the, the metrics? Before we yeah. Earn. So yeah, our eight metrics. Um, all of the brands that we have and we carry, they fall under at least two of these eight metrics. We have um, environmental friendly materials, so really supporting natural production, responsible production. Um, we have zero waste innovation, uh, looking at circular production as well as t- waste management, uh, and then also going towards environmental friendly packaging sustainable procurement, which is looking at the full circle of um, production from sourcing of the origin up until the usage when it's in the hands of customers. Uh, We look at social impact, um, fair trade, local made, uh, and local made is actually quite important for for now, post pandemic. And uh, lastly, preserving traditional skills, you know, looking at the values behind craftsmanship, uh, the lives of our artisans, um, really handmade versus machine made. So today cool. with Nis- yeah, with Nisa mm-hmm. Kapas, her focus, I mean, we'll get into this, but her focus, um, she's actually a new brand that we just um, uh, started working with uh, mid of December and her product speaks, speaks for itself. But I really fell in love with Batik making through her documentation. So I think she's got such a powerful story um, to tell. Um, and we saw that she was really championing preserving traditional skills um, and speaking to a modern crowd. You know, it's something that we can relate to. Um, and these are information that is not easily accessible. So I'm really excited about getting to know her better. Awesome, awesome. So let's welcome uh, Nisa. Hi, Nisa. Hi. Assalamualaikum. Hi, Haris. Nadia. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So I, I've been following Nisa Kalfas for quite some time and I'm, I'm actually trying to see how we can work together. So I'm happy that you are here right now. Um, so uh, before we delve deeper into more of the technical, uh, for those mm-hmm. uh, our audience that uh, don't know you, can you share a little bit about your journey and uh, what you have been doing all this while and what uh, are you focusing right now? Okay, um, sure. Um, I started, um, well, actually before I started Nisa Kapas, um, it, um, I was already married here. I'm actually not from, 
Chung, I, I'm based in Kuala Chengganu. Nisa Kapas is based in Kuala Chengganu. But actually, I am uh, from KL. I'm an Ampang girl. I'm a city girl. And I happen to marry um, a kampong man, 13, young, 13 years older than me. So we live uh, in Kampung Serada. It's a very quiet kampung. And, um, you know, from city life and then I had to transform into um, accepting uh, the kampung traditional way of life in here in Kampung Serada. Uh, it was actually very hard for me and I actually, it was very unexpected and I don't know, I tried to blend. Uh, there will be times that I can't, <laughs> I wasn't able to, but I don't know, I guess it's my fate. Alhamdulillah for everything. But um, so I got kids and uh, when I had uh, two of my boys, um, I was actually, um, I was actually a, a real kampung homemaker because um, I, I kind of like, I think it was very hard for me at first, but then I'll, it just, became a bit easier you know so i love the way that kampung people have the way they do things um so i got into baking but then after baking to cut short um i fell in love with somebody uh who was wearing batik and i was kept on asking myself why do the Trunganu people why do they always wear batik and I just remembered, like, everything is about batik here. It's it's like it's everywhere. Like, even men wear it, and they don't just wear it um, like a shirt. They Men wear do wear batik saro, like how women wear. And then they wear it on their head. And, um, you know, um, it's just a culture here. It's a batik culture. It's very rich. Everyone wears it like it's their everyday clothing. So that's how... Uh, Nisa Kappa started um, and it started in 2016, 2017. And when I started it, um, I fell in love with the hand block uh, method. But um, at first, I didn't know anything about hand blocking. You must know that I, I'm from KL and then I came to the kampung and then I love batik. I love what they're doing, but I never knew what batik making is all about, but I do have a background in architecture. I do have a background in design. I I I memang suka um, kampung home lifestyle, um, and so I created this brand called Nisa Kapas, um, and it's all about kampung lifestyle, but using batiks. And it was very hard at first for me to create Nisa Kapas because of um, I didn't have enough batik to sell at first. So I made this um, decision that why not I'll just make my own <laughs> without any knowledge. So that's how it started. And when it started to just cut short, um, I had to... I, I um, I had to study a bit. I had to go to the local batik makers, but because I'm an outsider, it was very hard to get uh, information, you know? Yeah, so, but lama kelamaan tu, um, when I get the chance to create my own batiks, and that's when Nisa Kapas, I don't know, it just turned to become like this one local brand that everybody uh, would drop by and say, are you really making batiks like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how it happened. And nice. until now, nice. Alhamdulillah, until now, we're still good, making good. handmade batiks. Yeah. Good to know. So like um, last time when we, um, because we tried to focus on sustainable manufacturing of product and uh, practices now. So we try to focus on each process. So we look at the material, we look at the glue, we look at the coating, uh, packaging and all that. We try to make each process greener. So one of the things that we were looking was uh, product packaging. Though, because normally it's 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 very difficult to find sustainable punya packaging. Yeah. You have to use bubble wrap, you have to use a lot of different things. Lah. So we, we get the idea from um, the, the bedong. Kan kalau kita bedong baby, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, kita bedong, the, kita swaddling kan, kita balik the baby. Mm -hmm. So, we, we implement that to our products, we use batik wrapping. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, so that we reduce uh, single-use packaging. So, people can use pack and all that. 
but I find it really hard to source because we have uh, we don't know sometimes which one is Malaysian batik, which one is Indonesian batik, mm. and there's a lot because we are not um, the, we are not a, a expert in batik, kan? Mm. So that's yeah. why right, I I feel I want to ask you more on the the industry itself, like um, mm -hmm. how how's the industry like nowadays, and like uh, what are the I don't know sustainability issue in the industry lah of the current. Um, in terms of batik making, right? You're asking specifically the industry lah, batik industry or making. Kala, yeah. Um, kalau nak dikatakan pasal batik making, um, and sustainability, I guess um, dekat sini, I just want to say that I think most of our artisans there are using chemical, mm. chemical. Yeah, and there's two types of chemical juga. There is uh, some types of chemical that is very dangerous and there's also some chemical that is uh, less dangerous that is permissible to be used. Um, so when you talk about sustainability and apa-apa yang terjadi dekat belah sini, dekat East Coast, um, I would say there are, um, you have to understand that there are artisans that are factory-based, they are huge. And then there are the little ones, uh, macam they do, macam contohnya macam saya, uh, Nisa Kapas, kita buat dekat rumah. Uh, and then um, uh, you also have like, for example, big, huge companies like No Arfa, uh, example, that they're, they're very well known. And they actually um, produce handmade and also other, um, handmade and also machine made. Uh, so when you talk about the whole thing, you have to understand about the artisans, um, the type of artisans that exist lah in the East Coast. Yeah. So um, kalau nak cakap pasal sustainability, memang kebanyakan they use chemical. Um, nak cakap natural dyeing ni, uh, I cannot really hear it uh, with my own ears, you know. But um, I find it more like it's across Malaysia that people are now, um, I could say the last two, three years, people have been um, making green decisions, you know, uh, in in terms of uh, cloth making. It doesn't have to be with batik because batik means it's with wax. Kan? So um, uh, in terms of sustainability, what I can say is um, um, the people here, um, we are more focused on creating batiks that is um, machine and handmade. But when it comes to handmade, they are all using chemical. Uh, right. For natural like, dyeing. Yeah. Uh, like if I, I mean, because I'm also new to the batik community and the industry, if we were to look at it at a, as, at a percentage, are more people doing uh, printing or hand block? In batik, uh, in Trangganu, people uh, because I said just now there's huge companies. The huge mm. ones, I think, they are doing a lot of machine. That's why you can find, you can say, affordable or very very cheap batik printing, mm. and they also do handmade. And handmade ni terbahagi kepada dua. Uh, they are the hand block and they are the uh, chanting. So there are. Mm. There are these two uh, main characters of uh, method lah, method. Uh -uh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the chanting you, tool is a drawing, right? Yes, chanting is with this chanting tool. And then hand blocking, they use a brass. The oh, uh, Nisa Kapas, uh, mm. we use mainly uh, uh, block. brass, brass block. Yeah. The mm. mm. uh so... Banyak sebenarnya nak cakap kalau sustainability ah, ah, ni kan. Tapi ah, lebih lagi kita later we go ah, a bit into technical. Ah, okay. uh, I, I think Memang. now I I I yeah. I, I, I nak uh, I want to ask Mia juga because you've been in yes. the uh, the fashion industry for quite some time mm -hmm. already. So um, how 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 do you, you see the party in term of the fashion punya right now in 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 application wise? Uh, meaning like the relevance in terms of customer responding to it or in general la, because like yeah. you've, you've you've done uh, fashion products mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. it so like how are you seeing party i i think slowly people are definitely 
uh, showing a demand, a small, like a strong interest in, in, in batik and handmaking, anything to do with handmaking. Um, so like even going down to like hand loomed uh, um, linen, hand loomed cotton. Um, I know a few uh, brands not from Malaysia that are getting into batik making, whether it's from India, mm. Southeast Asia. Um, so I think people are, you know, because I think there's a process behind that as well um, that people want to get to know and want to support. So I definitely see that there is uh, an opening for it. In terms of um, the the demand, Isa, how, how are you coping up with the demand? <laughs> um, every year it changes. Uh, you know, before COVID, after COVID, now. Yeah, so um, I would say last time people, they don't really know the true meaning of batik, handmade batik. Um, but now uh, people know all about it. So that's amazing. Yeah, I think because of social media, uh, you know, technology and all that. But it's amazing when people come here, they know what they're, they're, they're looking for. Yeah. yeah, I think also for a younger generation for a while in Malaysia, uh, it wasn't so accessible, you know, like young, you know, people are in their twenties, thirties, they want a nice top, casual top that has batik on it. We couldn't really find it, you know, in the malls or in the stores. And only now slowly we're seeing more brands incorporate that in. Um, mm -hmm. So that's interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Mia, you want to go into the like deeper question? Yeah. Now? <laughs> yes. <I'm dying. laughs> Like we had a Finish deep conversation <laughs> before this yeah. this live, um, but yeah, Nisa, I I really um, I I'm new to this, so I'm really curious because um, I was mentioning earlier, um, you know, your product is beautiful, but I was really following your IG, I was really looking and reading into your process and your documentation, and it made me personally like build a relationship with Batik, as as oh a, just God, a viewer. Really? I think like That's you really the, personalized it and you're sharing information yeah. that we don't often hear or can even Come find in here. books. Yeah. So I kind right. of want to, yeah, I, I want to start with like relating it back to preserving traditional skills. It's not just about the skill set, right? But there's deeper meanings to it being a way of life. Um, and I remember earlier you were mentioning before we went live that before you liked Batik for its print. But now it's more than just that. Um, tell us about that. Yeah. Um, you see, I used to think that, you know, batik is just something colorful with flowers and all. Um, but when I, I guess I fell into batik making because I didn't have any, I didn't have any um, knowledge in batik making. You can imagine I cannot even chanting because I never understood the ratio of the wax, uh, the, the wax ratio. And I never understood, um, you know, the way to uh, rotate the block. Also, I never understood anything about why this cloth works, that cloth doesn't work, you know. And this is not just talking about uh, natural dyeing, which is our latest creation in 2021. It's our natural dyed batiks, which we call batik rasia alam. That's the reason why we call it that way. I'll tell you later, Nanti. But when I first started to, um, I was clueless about the art. And um, I guess lama kelamaan tu, uh, because I was clueless and I didn't know anything, I failed. You can say the first two years of experimenting and selling, experimenting and selling and finding artisans to work with some, uh, you know, some okay, some not, you know. So it was a failure actually in Isakapasni at first for me. And I broke down because I work, when you do batik making, you work with the weather. Your rain, your sunshine is your best friend, but your, your, the best, your teacher, the best teacher is your rain. You know, because the rain teaches you how to be very, very, very patient because you need to make income also during the rain season because, I don't know, uh, in Trenggano, <laughs> uh, Musim Tukuju is at the end of the year. But in terms of sales, people buy mostly at the end yeah. of the year. Right. Yeah. 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 So, 
And then we have January. We are pressured every time January because mm-hmm. we have to come out. We have to come out like we have to check properly all the cloth because we don't want any errors, right? Yeah. So it's very yeah. stressful. So all these years, I mean, I mean from 2015, 2016 until now of just getting to know what Batik is and in terms of design because I do create our very own designs. It's not from somebody else. It's mm. not like it's uh, the uh, it's not from the block artisan, the the one that creates the the brass block. It's not from them. So I I had no idea how to create my own designs because I didn't understand uh, block making. Mm. And they weren't going to share with somebody from outside. And then I couldn't even speak Trenggano to tell you the truth, Najmiya and Hari. Yeah. yeah. It was very hard. And I had to yeah. learn to be humble and at the same time be at the same level as how they are thinking, you know. So I had to understand how does a batik maker really think and mm. how does a block artisan, how do they create the brass? So every single, because when, when I see a cloth or batik, I think it's beautiful. But it's not just that, it's the, it's the work behind block making, design, design, inspiration, design, uh, block making. And then we have our artisans hand blocking, teaching them how to hand block each cloth. Not only that, how to hand paint and how to mm-hmm. fix the color, how to boil. Right. Up to the end because batik making the steps is too is too much. It's too but it's that's traditional, traditional way of handmade, of mm-hmm. making things by hand. Like um when we have um usually when you talk about traditional art, it's something made from scratch. That means uh when example like traditional wood carving, you have to find mm-hmm. the wood. But which wood, right? And you yeah. need the tools to make the wood, uh, or you want to do song kit. You have to understand how does a person make a song kit. The tools, the inspiration. It's it's a whole. To me, batik is not about, not just about the beautiful things that put on your body like that. It's like mm. a huge, huge process, meticulous process of. Um, artisanal craftsmanship yeah, yeah. Mm. and like from the nice. sounds of it it sounds like you have to also understand and rely on your environment nature right mm. um, especially now that you're going into uh, a natural dye tell us um, has okay. has this craft brought you closer to like working with nature and how's how has that changed you as a person tremendously um it's i don't know what to say um uh, okay natural dyeing at, at first when i was creating Misa Kapas, i always had that sustainability i think it's in me i wanted to create natural dyed batiks at first so i did one with onion onion skin sorry mm-hmm. and then i also did chemical but i did it both though but i i, I was like I was so confused. Which one, Ya Allah? I know. I don't know which one. And I never understood the natural dyeing part because it's it's very hard to understand. But it was so easy to do uh, the chemical. So that's what I did. I did what was mm-hmm. easy. Mm-hmm. But what mm-hmm. I did was, uh, what I was doing that is easy until today is actually harmful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. almost... Um, it's harmful. It's very. It's not just harmful, though. It's very harmful, because yeah. the chemical um, is um, that involves in the batik making can mm. cause irritation. It can cause uh, asthma. It can cause a lot, a lot of other sickness. Mm-hmm. And I used to make batiks on my own without my artisan. So jadi kita tahu lah. Uh, betapa yeah, yeah. seriusnya sebenarnya chemical that we are dealing with just to produce mm. art, betul tak? So, mm. I nak touch sikit lah Nisa. Huh? I, I think yeah. I nak touch sekejap on that since <laughs> boleh, you, boleh. you've talked about chemicals. Yeah? Uh, before I touch uh-huh. that, um, some of our uh, listener uh, 
Shanisa uh, said, uh, congratulation and Pearl said, you. impressive what you've done. I see the speed of rock and roll live in wow. your search to figure your art. <laughs> thank so you. thank you, Pearl. Thank, thank you, you uh, Shanik, uh, for tuning in. Um, yeah. I, know, I want to touch about the, the chemical being used. Eh? In terms of my mm. industry, um, in the wood industry, eh? the the person that will always get sick uh, in mm. the in manufacturing are the people that is involved in the spray, tau, the coating part. Oh. Because traditionally, uh, you know, when you buy new furniture, tau, this, there's the new furniture yeah. smell, right? So mm. some people like it. I used to like it. But actually, these are all uh, toxic. Tau. These are VOCs. Mm. Because in terms of coating of wood products, they use a lot of oil-based coating. So all by oil-based coating, you have to use thinner, you have to use uh, to dilute the, the paint. Kan? And normally when they spray, even though they uh, use mask and all that, they are still exposed to it. Tau. It's at some part mm. of the body and, and so they get sick a lot. So that's why um, when I look into the process and see that as a problem, we uh, turn our coating into water base so water base oh. non toxic coating so it it's, it's it's not dangerous for the user and at the same time for our staff and they are they are actually quite happy with the change uh, even though it's slightly more expensive but for us it's not really mm. much we don't really look into it that much but the thing is we we have um, a better environment for our staff and uh, better as a whole in terms of eco-friendliness so i do agree like a lot of the traditional um, way of doing things are actually very very harmful so thank you for for looking mm -hmm. into that and highlighting that mm -hmm. yeah so that's one of the reasons why we created um the nat natural dyeing uh, batik, natural dyed batik because I saw because it was always in me after all these years that I wanted to do natural dye but I didn't know how to because of the wax but mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah after I don't know how many years um, 20, 21, just before COVID I wanted to learn with somebody that could teach me natural dyeing which is um, uh, um, for Aziz Awang in Kelantan so I went all the way in Kelantan January before COVID and I learned with him but I was think I, I was thinking that okay if I learned natural dyeing it would be like I don't know I was thinking okay I, there'll be onion skins you know there'll be so many other materials but when I went to his class it was like you don't need books you don't write notes it's really like you looking at the cloth and really understanding the changes of natural color wow. so daripada uh, and dia bagi semua like macam local plant so dia bagi macam rambutan skin which looks mm. so horrible because it was black mm. <laughs> selalu mm. kalau kita tengok mm. rambutan is red, it's red it's yummy looking <laughs> right <laughs> this was like it looks it looks dead lah kan i mean it's it looks horrible and then oh. the smell so i was really scared <laughs> my experience lah and then um uh, so he taught me the spiritual way of learning it because he wanted me to understand why did a uh, natural dye exist. Mm -hmm. You understand? Um, yeah. Because in when I think a lot of people now, modern people think natural dyeing, okay, like much overseas, you see people doing it, right? But they are yeah. doing um, it like the the overseas way, you know? Like there's Japanese indigo, they will do it that right. way. It's not the same as what we are doing here in the studio. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the different plants, you know, the different plants across the world, you know, mm -hmm. why um, maybe people across um, Malaysia, or uh, example, um, maybe in the States, you know, they're using this kind of plant. They have mm -hmm. all those local plants, but in, the, uh, in our side in Asia, we have these plants like that. So he mm -hmm. wanted me to understand why was this plant placed here? Uh, and, and so I had to like, really, yeah, why? <laughs> you know? So it got wow. back to me, like, for me, it's a, it's a very spiritual one, like, because everything that was, uh, every plant that blooms or, you know, that is from the root and 
and the amazing thing that should die you can use the branch you can use the leaf mm-hmm. you not just using the the you know so he's teaching me where to find and why do you have to do natural dyeing like that yeah because the yeah. easy part yeah yeah the easy part is making the color actually but the one that you are missing is why why are, why do you want to do natural dyeing or why is it done this way like that there are certain plants mm-hmm. that but what he said all plants can come out with color because they're all the same base uh, meaning they're created the same way like we humans we all have the same we have blood to live that uh, to be mm-hmm. alive right same uh the the plant also is like that and then sometimes he even mentioned if you want to use rambutan you have to use it during this season you cannot mm-hmm. use during dry season it has to be uh something like that they they have their mm. punya rules tau in natural yeah, dyeing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why it's very difficult. And the best is to get the plant from the, the plant that is um not store bought, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I did is, see that yeah. I saw that you you're growing indigo, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, so I I saw that and I was like, wow, like Nisa is going to the extent of really getting to know the plant, like Slowly a botanist. Changing. Yeah, yeah so I don't know how I, to plant Najmia. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I, I, I guess that that makes all the difference and that's necessary in the process, yeah. Because um, I want to. I want to do natural dyeing. They all know my staff, uh, our artisan. They know. But they know it's very difficult because us doing natural dye batiks, um, the ones that we did for you in Unplug, mm-hmm. it's very hard. I is uh, among the amount of work just to produce a few pieces, ten pieces, is crazy here at the back. <laughs> yeah, right, right. because they're um, they're different every time. The shade is different. Mm-hmm. And every time we do it, I don't know. There's something different happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you this were, plan, if, yeah, yeah. If, if you were like to compare uh, making something out of natural dye versus synthetic, what's the time difference like to make a batch of ten pieces? Ten pieces, maybe one day. No. Um. For chemical dyeing, we can make maybe uh we can make it every day okay right. we can make 15 sets uh, per day but for natural dyeing before we work on that day to make the color we have to cook the dye and before we cook the dye we have to we call it scour scour we clean the cloth we boil the cloth and not only that like we have to balance with chemical dyeing production so it's it's very hard so maybe this 10 pieces is per week wow okay instead of every day 10 to 15 maybe we get like 10 to 15 per day for yeah. once a week it's very hard because we have to do it correctly and i don't know every time uh when i'm not around with my staff when they're doing natural dyeing something goes wrong <laughs> yeah. right right yeah so it needs me to be there um i have to exist yeah. in front of them yeah. yeah would you say would you say that tra- traditionally uh was batik made with natural dye okay i think yes yeah i think yes but i think i'm just saying this but i think they're hidden the information Wait. is hidden. Ah. Why? Why so is the knowledge, that? Eh? I don't know. Because why is it that in Indonesia they are using natural dye mm-hmm. until exactly. today? No problem. They have been doing it for hundreds of years. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's an old generation, ancient skill. But why is it in Malaysia? I always ask myself. Why would orang artisan kita in Malaysia tak buat natural dye? Yeah. Batik especially. Sebab batik paling awal dia punya cloth making is traditional cloth. Dia yeah. dia songket dulu tapi 
uh, ada tenun, you know, all that. But but it comes mm-hmm. after that. It's quite early. You want to know how yeah. early? You can see in Piramli uh, movies. Batik terap with wood exists already. Mm-hmm. It's in mm-hmm. his movies. Do you think it's, it's it? just a knowledge that's wiped out? Yeah. Because they are, they, I don't know how, but that's why I always think that it's a colonization thing. They use synthetic right away. Right. And then right. everyone used it because probably it's cheaper because nobody mm-hmm. wants to, I'm not sure lah, maybe go through the, the hassle lah. not enough. Yes, yes. And yeah, people, yeah. I think, did not think like how we think last time because I'm just, it's just my opinion. Maybe last time, um, yeah, people live in a very green life but maybe they wanted to make more money, example. Tapi sekarang ni, dunia ni dah terbalik. Kita nak hmm. selamatkan dunia ni, kita nak kita nak preserve kita punya art, kita nak preserve all the trees, the nature because we see what's happening to our plant. We want to save yeah. the earth, you know. And you, that, that, that's, that's the thing lah. Like, it's like, it's like, it's like, there's, we did it right back, back then and we've lost it. So now we want to go back to the old ways. Nisa Kapas memang nak go back to the old way, I think. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that that brings me to the next question. Um, you've always highlighted the importance of traditional art. And batik is a Malay, Malaysian traditional art and it's about the people and it's a lifestyle. Can you share with us, um, especially the viewers, what more about that? What do you mean? Hmm, I think it's got to do with something you make by with your hands. I think it's very different like my hands and my artisans i have four of them here we all do it differently so when you have a when you have a piece of batik this is made by our artisan uh example zul made this this one uh i made this you know and i think that makes it very harmonious you know not in terms of um uh in terms of quality, sebab batik ni is memang truly one of a kind. It may, especially uh, hand block making because dia nampak boleh, dia almost macam machine actually. Tapi yeah. because dia hand made, dia bukan macam dia, um, bukan yang sekaligus, bukan yang like all, uh, uh, apa, once like screen printing, you know, you get mm. like mm. a few meters, uh, you have to hand blocking with brass, yeah. you have to build it each, yeah. uh, uh, each time you stamp, that's one work. And then you have yeah. to change the wax. And you stamp again, you have to change the wax. Yeah. And then they all do it differently. They yeah. have their own rhythm. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I mean, it, it brought, yeah. it, it brings to mind when I was in Morocco, uh, mm-hmm. brass, uh, brass engraving. It was very spiritual uh-huh. to them because it was an expression of their soul. And each person had their own personality. Do you feel it's the mm. same when it comes to hand blocking? Mm. Especially, yeah, hand blocking. But hand blocking, you can't really see it uh, mm. because everything looks the same. But when you when you do chanting, ah, uh, yeah, that one uh, is. That's why I think chanting is much more difficult than uh, hand blocking because chanting is really a solo work, and mm-hmm. you need to get in the mood. I have days when I don't want to do it. And then, if I don't do it, it's totally, uh, they will have errors, you know. Yeah. Chanting ni, you can ada semangat batik yang tinggi lah. That's why dekat Nini Sakapas, sometimes when I see the quality of their work, they will get a lecture from me. <laughs> because I know it's to do with their personality. Yeah, yeah. Because personality, your soul, remember, reflect on your work. Because you are yeah. not just... I mean, you're not machine. You're doing, um, you're doing uh, a labor of love. Is it they call it? Yeah, they yeah, are. yeah, something like that. So speaking um, on your uh, your your artisans under you, uh, were they already doing batik before you came in, or you trained them from scratch? Trained them from scratch. Wow. So and it was very hard. Yeah. That's but amazing. But alhamdulillah. Uh, they've been with me. The young, uh, the oldest with us is now already reaching five years with us. So that's amazing. That means nice. he likes what he is doing. Which yeah. is very hard to do, Najman Harith, because 
batik making is hard i had a hard time i and i don't know how to teach them but i did it lah but it's amazing to see them work together the boys working together and understanding yeah. what i want because what i want is not what they want <laughs> Yeah. But Jata. they have to understand why Nisa Kapas Batik has to be done this way. Why the mm. color? Why is nude beige or nude pink or rose pink is all different? Why? Why? And then they have to learn, okay, um, if something goes wrong with the hand blocking process, uh, what what do I do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Would you say that now in the community of Batik makers, people are still passing down the knowledge to generations after them yes. or it's kind of cut off? Yes, I, I, I hear um, from other artisans that their children are de either designing or mm -hmm. I hear that their children are making the art. But okay. I can say like one artisan, one child. Mm. Yeah. And like, so. I kind of, I'm curious. The child, do they pick this up because they can sustain and make a livelihood out of it? Or mm. they do it more more than just that? I think it's when their father sees this one can do, they choose that one. Mm. Because not all the same, right? Not yeah, all yeah, people, yeah. not everyone is the same. But mm. I that's what I feel. Memang, because my husband told me that if your staff, they are your rezeki. Mm. So I, I feel mm. like even though I never knew my staff, the four artisans that we have um, are able to do batik. But the years that we learn together, they are batik makers in the end, right? Mm. They are. Kita, yeah. kena, kita punya seniman. Yeah, they kena, yeah kita punya seniman. Yeah. We are making the art with them. So they are the same level as us. Mm. Yeah. In fact, maybe okay. higher or something. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think kita dah, we are we are nearing the end of the show, but I think it, mm. it's quite a, a, a deep topic to go into. Maybe we can do another session separately on this. Um, but like before yeah. we we end the show, um, I, I want to ask more on like, what do you see the industry should go into, and like, or what kind of help you need to to for you to grow and support this uh, movement. Natural dye sustainable okay. kalau boleh kan hmm. uh, tapi i'm not sure lah if i would say this wrongly or not if boleh our government really try and open up to natural dyeing like fully like not just saying it and not just promoting okay because i've i've been to kraftangan i've been to their meetings and then they just show the product you know but they never like they never like say like this is the good way of making party. Mm -hmm. They never promote it that way, or um, because they I don't know I'm I'm not sure. If, maybe people are more aware now because what happened COVID and all that, and then also people are opening up to natural kind natural resources natural. So I just if if I I would like to say that. The government, they will do something with natural, getting, let our uh, local artisans get into natural dyeing. Mm. You know, get people like Paul Aziz to really stretch out his information and teach and have a school or something, you know. Mm. Or, you know, Nisa Kapas, um, if we can, but to get to that level, is, it takes time. Lah. Mm. But we do have like people that does indigo, Sebenarnya indigo tu lebih baik bagi saya lah daripada local plant yang kami buat sebab kita pakai macam buah pinang, kita pakai manja kani, oak gall nuts, uh, we are using betel nuts but indigo I think is is more stable hmm. for me when I learn because when I'm doing this uh, with local plant it's very tedious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but indigo is a different thing. It's a fermentation. The leaf, we ferment it and it produces that blue dye. It's actually green, but when it's exposed to the air, uh, it becomes blue like that. Yeah. It's more uh, effective actually in the long run. Mm -hmm. Plus, it makes a beautiful so. color. Natural mm -hmm. dye. Natural dye. Yeah, but, so, so, I think, I, think I wish people mm. will be more exposed. Lah. Mm -hmm. Local artisans yeah. need. Oh, oh, oh. You know, like we have like 
um, we have like institute craft negara kan dekat uh, tak silap saya kat KL hmm. kenapa kita tak diajar tu because natural dye ni memang exist in our culture they use it in yeah. I think they definitely use it in ikat in yeah. in song maybe not song kit I'm not sure because I, I don't have the documentation but maybe if people if you learn from the textile school ke university textile design dia mesti tahu ni semua but kenapa kita tak expose okay 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 so I think we we need to collectively look into that as well um uh, Inam from Nikin said very good initiative to apply sustainability approach at local traditional cottage industry really commendable and yes uh, I think for us as well we, we we really appreciate what you're doing and we we really wish that you would grow and um uh, continue with your effort. Uh, Mia, you, you. you wanted to uh, and uh, uh, promote something? Uh, me? Yes, yes, yes. So I just, um, you know, um, I, I'm happy that we're able to hear just a glimpse of Nisa's story um, and, you know, the issues that we face when it comes to uh, processes like going into natural dyeing and we kind of want to hear more from the people and like-minded brands um, so we are for this month uh, of January we are running a survey to really understand um, people's needs uh, with their own personal sustainable journey as a consumer as a producer as a designer it's open to all we want to know where, where you're at uh, what gaps or um, opportunities we can come and assist you with so we have a survey, open survey, uh, that will be posted on our Instagram, Shop Unplug. The link will be there. It's an online survey, 15 minutes max. Um, for everyone who takes time to answer this survey um, to help us in this ecosystem, uh, we're giving off 20 ringgit um, store credit um, that you can use. So we would really appreciate this from the community because uh, your feedback will help us move to the right direction. Absolutely. Again, Nisa, thank you for this, and I'm waiting for your book. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope you write a book. <laughs> Inshallah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, you, guys. Um, for uh, everyone that is tuning in, if you want to know more about Nisa Kambas, you can uh, fo follow the IG at Nisa Kapas. And if you want to look at their physical products, they have unplugged in Bangsa, so you can have a look there as well. Um, and um, for everyone that is tuning in, thank you very much for uh, spending your time with us. Uh, if you find value in what we're sharing, do share it with your friends or family and uh, be part of the conversation. Like um, in Facebook, we have a community called Green Design Malaysia where we have uh, right now around 1,300 plus members which are designers, business people, consumers, students, researchers why we talk about all these issues of sustainability in Malaysia. Because a lot of the things that we see or, or, or hear about sustainability are mostly Western. So we want mm -hmm. to create local knowledge yeah. and local uh, uh, that, um, conversation. So do join us, be part of the change. And thank you for tuning in. Have a green week ahead. Bye, guys. <laughs> okay.